Good evening, my dear friends and colleagues. Our topic today uh, is about IgA dominant infection related glomerulonephritis. IgA dominant infection related glomerulonephritis, which is an important and hot topic in nephrology, uh, but uh, unfortunately, it is uh, less diagnosed or underdiagnosed and misdiagnosed uh, uh, as post streptococcal or post infectious. Uh, but it is very common nowadays. This is our agenda. What about the epidemiology? I will try to compare uh, during my talk with uh, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. An IgA dominant infection related is usually occurring in adults in the setting of ongoing infection when there is infection rather than a sequelae post-infectious post-streptococcal as we know usually occurs after seven to ten days or two to three weeks following a skin or throat infections but the IgA dominant usually occurs when there is an ongoing actually uh, uh, infection the average age is between uh, around 55 or 58 uh, years of age up to 41 percent over 65 years of age while the age of post streptococcal is between 5 uh, or uh, 2 14 and uh, here it is about more than 50 years of age in both there is a slight male predominance and here in IgA dominant uh, infection related usually most of the patient have multiple comorbidities the most common is diabetes in around 65 percent of patients patients uh, can be uh, malignant having a heart disease and alcohol or substance abuse so again there is an ongoing it occurs in the setting of an ongoing infection elderly patient more than 50 years of age with comorbidities especially diabetes as i said before IgA dominant uh, infection related glomerulonephritis uh, is usually undiagnosed but it is common and with increasing frequency let's look in developed countries the uh, IgA dominant have a 300% increased prevalence compared to post streptococcal. 300% increased prevalence. It is much, much more higher uh, in incidence compared to post streptococcal. What about the organism? 65% of patients are infected with MRSA and 25% with methicillin sensitive staphylococcus aureus it is usually staph infection 65 percent MRSA and the 25 percent methicillin sensitive staphylococcus aureus what about the sites the most common or the most frequent sites of infection are the skin infections followed by visceral infections like pneumonia endocarditis osteomyelitis it can be caused by other organisms such as Staph epidermidis, Streptococcus, Klebsiella, Escherichia coli, but the most common is Staphylococcus aureus. What about the el pathogenesis? El IgA dominant infection related glomerulonephritis is an example of immune complex glomerulonephritis. As we said, it is typically associated with a staph aureus infection in adult patients with underlying comorbidities. This is the conclusion. Don't forget that. The pathogenesis involves staphylococcus in telotoxins functioning as super antigen, as we said in the previous lecture. Here's the mechanism that the staph antigens act as super antigen that bind directly to the 
major histocompatibility complex on antigen presenting cells inducing an immune complex formation with complement activation. And this, lastly, co localized with the glomerular IgA deposits inducing mesangial deposits. So don't forget this word. Staphylococcus toxins act as super antigen. What about the clinical manifestations? In post streptococcal, as we said, in children it is mostly nephritic presentation, typical nephritic, while in adults uh, it can be nephritic or in 20% can be nephrotic. But here it is much more aggressive. An IgA dominant active disease usually present with acute or rapidly progressive renal failure acute or rapidly progressive nephrotic range proteinuria in 50% of patients much higher frequency and hematuria and the gross hematuria in around 25% so again it is much more aggressive are a rapidly progressive renal failure nephrotic range proteinuria and microscopic hematuria and the gross hematuria in 25% don't forget this is the difference from post streptococcal. It is much more aggressive. Milder uh, uh, clinical course can occur, but it is yeah, less frequent. We have also low C3, low complement 3 in around 50 to 70 percent of patients, and IgA levels can be mildly increased. What about the pathology? Renal biopsy shows endocapillary proliferation. Endocapillary proliferation, it is a proliferative pattern with exudation much more higher than in post streptococcal. There is higher exudation here in around in 40 to 50 uh, to 80 percent of patients. So it is proliferative with more exudation. Mesangial proliferation in 20 to 60 percent of patients, crescentic GN can occur in less than 5 percent. So the most common is endocabinal proliferation with higher exudation. Crescent as a whole can occur in any type in up to 35 percent of patients and positive ANCA in 22 percent. What about the deposits or the immune fluorescence? It is the most important here. It is usually intense IgA, IgA with co-dominant C3. Don't forget that in post streptococcal it is mainly C3, C3 followed by IgG. This is the difference. In post streptococcal it is mainly C3 followed by IgG. But here it is. IgA, IgA, so the term is IgA dominant infection related glomerulonephritis with C3. What about the electron microscopy? Here, the deposition is mainly mesangial density deposits. This is also a difference from post streptococcal. Mesangial deposits in most of the cases. We, uh, in up to reaching up to 80%. Uh, in 80%, there would be sub epithelial hump deposits, sub epithelial humps, with also some sub endothelial deposits. So, again, what is the difference in the pathology? By light microscopy, both can be proliferative better. But here in IgA, there is more exudation, can be some mesangial proliferation and some crescent. What about the electron, uh, the immune fluorescence? Here it is intense IgA with co dominant C3, but in post streptococcal, it is C3 followed by IgA. In electron microscopy, the difference is that IgA dominant can have more, much more mesangial density deposits followed by sub epithelial and can have some sub endothelial, while in the post streptococcal, it is mainly in the glomerular 
basement membrane in the sub-epithelial hump deposits are much more universally present. This is the picture or the pathology. As we see, it is a proliferative butter with more exudation, with more exudation. Here in immune fluorescence, as we can see, this is the IgA and this is C3. It, it is mean, it is present in the mesangium and the capillary walls. It is present in mesangium and capillary wall. Also, C3 are present in mesangium, as we see, and capillary wall. This is electron microscopy showing sub-epithelial pumps and the mesangial deposits. What about differential diagnosis and the natural history? Of course, the main differential diagnosis is IgA nephropathy in the biopsy because both, both of them with immune fluorescence uh, are having IgA and C3 in biopsy by immune fluorescence. So the main differenti uh, differential diagnosis is IgA nephropathy. So let's look. In IgA dominant, in IgA dominant infection related glomerulonephritis favored is favored in the presence of staph infection as the patient have staph infections having hypocomplementemia if there is much more severe proteinuria and a renal biopsy shows strong C3 and IgA staining strong C3 and IgA staining in the same pattern with kappa staining kappa staining the same or greater than lambda staining so uh, with sub-epithelial hum deposits we don't have sub-epithelial deposits in IgA nephropathy so the main differentiation between IgA and the IgA, IgA dominant infection related nephritis from IgA nephropathy is the presence of staph infection, hypocomplementemia, much more proteinuria and the renal biopsy the there is a strong C3 and the IgA staining with in the same pattern with kappa staining the same or greater than lambda and also the presence of sub-epithelial hump because this is a very important question a very important comparison how to differentiate between an IgA dominant infection related nephritis and the IgA nephropathy what about the prognosis of course an IgA dominant infection related nephritis have a much more worse outcome compared to IgA nephropathy. What about treatment? Of course, the treatment is directed mainly against the infection. Active infection should be treated with appropriate and aggressive antibiotic therapy, and this can lead to renal recovery if the infection is treated uh, well. Corticosteroids is contraindicated, at least during active infection. We shouldn't give steroids, especially in the presence of active infection. So it is, as we said, it is very important to differentiate from IgA nephropathy because in IgA nephropathy, steroids can be given in only in severe cases. So here in IgA uh, dominant uh, infection-related glomerulonephritis, we shouldn't give steroids especially during active disease thank you. this video is the last one in the glomerulonephritis chapter we have finished we have finished the glomerulonephritis uh, chapter to see you in the next chapter inshallah